If you can't find a product to sell on Amazon, then this is the video for you. Everyone's got dreams of making 10K a month selling on Amazon, but the fact is that very few people end up actually achieving it. The problem for most people is finding the right product to sell. So in this video, I'll take you from zero to understanding exactly how you can go out and find a five to 10K a month product to sell on Amazon profitably every day like clockwork. Hey guys, welcome to the video. So actually my very first product was a complete failure. But since then and along the way, I've been lucky enough to learn a system that's enabled me to launch now around about 40 successful products. I've sold over $4 million on Amazon. So what was it that I learned along the way? What am I doing differently that separates me from the 99% that maybe like yourself are stuck on finding the right product to sell on Amazon? And I'm not saying this to brag or to make myself sound good or anything. What I truly want is for you to follow along with this video and after watching to the end, to be able to get out there and go on Amazon that very same day and find yourself your first five to $10,000 a month profitable product that'll be your, your baseline for your first online business income. It'll be the foundation for you being able to quit your nine to five and you know, hopefully being able to live out your dreams like I'm lucky enough to be able to do right now. So if that sounds good, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get these videos as they're coming out and let's dive into the computer and let's go. So I wanna start by saying that there are kind of two layers to finding a successful product and making it profitable and winning a niche, basically dominating a niche. The first level is like the mechanics or it's like you could say it's the science or just the number crunching side of things. So all that means is you have a keyword or something on Amazon and you open up a Chrome extension and you start looking at the data, you start looking at the average price, the reviews, and all you're thinking is, you know, is there enough competition in this marketplace? Are people making money? Or that's basically it. Like, are there too many reviews for, for me to compete? That's the number crunching aspect. And what I want to show you and talk to you about in this video is that that's really just the surface level. Normally, if you give, for example, if you screenshot this, um, you know, Chrome extension, sort of output and you ask somebody who is a seven or an eight figure seller, could, should I sell this product? The answer almost always is, I don't know, because it depends. And this surface level just isn't enough to make that sort of evaluation. So what I'm gonna cover in this video is the second layer that lies underneath that sort of mechanical number crunching aspect. And this is the art. This is where the real, the real successful sellers come out and play. And this is where you add value and this is where you can actually pick any boring old product and turn it into something that's gonna make you money like clockwork, nonstop, day after day for years. And here's the wonderful thing about this. You already have everything you need to be able to do this. You already have the mindset. It's already right in here. And let me explain this with an example. Think about the last time that you went shopping to buy something, whether it was you went to the grocery store um, or you bought something on Amazon or you bought a gift for someone or maybe you went to the hardware store. Whatever example that is, Put yourself in the mindset of last time you went out to go and purchase something, what did you really want? And more importantly, how did you choose to buy what you ended up buying? Was it price? Was it a particular feature that the product had? Was it a look, something that you saw that caught your eye? That's the sort of stuff that we're gonna get into in this video and that I use in my business every day when I'm thinking about launching products. And once you're realizing that all of these things are the things that matter, these are the things that actually make your customer buy your product or go and buy somebody else's, once you understand that thought process, which again, you're already going through every day when you go out and buy something, once you understand that and can tap into it, that is when Amazon as a world will just open itself up to you and you'll be finding profitable products and uncovering hidden niches left, right and center all day, every day like clockwork. Because once you tap into that mentality, you are going to be able to create a product that is irresistible to your customer so that when they see it, they have no choice but to come over and pick it up, chuck it in the cart and walk away with it because your product just blew away the competition. And the important thing here is that you don't need anything new. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're not doing anything that's super complicated. We're doing exactly what every business, business around us, pardon me, has done for decades or for centuries. There's nothing new here. The only thing that's new and that's changed is that now you and I can do this from home or from wherever we choose to do it, whether it's a cafe, we can do it in our pajamas if we want to, we can do it in the nude if that's your thing. And you can start this with very little money because the information is all at your fingertips, the platforms are all there. So the only thing that's changed is how easy it is to actually get into this mindset and to be able to do it. So this video will guide you through going through that thought process. And I'm actually gonna start with an example that I found uh, in the last product research video I did. That's gonna be up here. So check that one out uh, after this video if you want. I dove into this particular product through the normal method of finding initial product ideas, that's go to Helium 10, 
um, use the Nomad 10 discount code if you don't have an account and you wanna sign up and pay for it. I'll put that up there. Go to black box, product research, and then I have just I just have a you know a bunch of presets that I'll use normally when I'm looking. Here they are quickly. Um, I changed them a little bit, so don't you know take this as gospel. But again, that other video that I linked up there, I have the downloadable guide. You can go check that. What I normally use, but you know you fill in the criteria as these are, and you click search, and then you scroll through this list. And I did that in this previous video, so I'm not going to do it again. Uh, and then you just pick whatever looks interesting. And in this case, it was low review count, it's 76 reviews, which was great. Um, BSR is good, and that means that the monthly revenue is good. So that's actually in the high range for me. So that's sort of where I'm targeting now. Um, but if you're a new seller, I honestly recommend that you look to try and aim towards selling a product that will sell you in the five to $10,000 a month range. I think there's just less competition there and there's less eyes on those products. So if you want an easier time starting, that's what I recommend. But this one's a little bit above that, but that's fine. Um, and the price is okay. One thing I just, as an anecdotal story, I had one student recently, they're selling a product and they're trying to sell it for less than $10. The reason why I set a price minimum normally of around about $15 is as you get down in price, particularly below $10, your FBA fees and your Amazon PPC are just super expensive. So I l am really not open to looking at those lower price products. I just found that generally they're just, you know, they're, they're tough to make work. So anyway, $20 is fine. I like to go higher than that, $25, $30 ideally. 30 plus is great. Um, keep in mind then you'll need to invest in more inventory at the start, but that's okay for me. So 20 bucks, the, all, all of these metrics look great. And that was how I pinned it to my, my list here in Helium 10. And then all I wanna do is just start looking at these products. So again, I could go and do this for a whole bunch, but I wanna start with one because you can go through these and spend an hour looking at one product and at the end of that hour, you can have a profitable product idea, you know, and it takes half an hour to an hour to do so for each product. So we have our case study product and we wanna dive into it. So just click on the actions here, or I think you can click here as well, open it up in Amazon. And I like to first take a look at the specific listing. So I wanna look at the, the listing that's been identified first. I'm gonna go through and just take a, a detailed look at the listing first. And then I'll pick a keyword from the title, one the probably the primary keyword that I think will be getting the most sales and that these guys think is getting the most sales because they put it right up front in their title. Therefore, it should be the most important, um, highest converting one for them. And then I'll look at the niche and then I'm gonna run you through the entire process of how I'm looking at this to improve this product and to come out with something that's gonna be better. It's just gonna dominate the niche. So let's start with this listing. Um, listing images look fine. And what I'm gonna do actually, I'll pull up my notes right now. Here are the guidelines that I want you to understand and to be able to follow in order to do this second layer, this deeper level thinking of how to find profitable products and dominate those niches that you choose to go into and to do so <laughs> like clockwork. Firstly, you have to understand the target customer and why they are actually buying the product. So again, this is going back to this thought process of you putting yourself in your own shoes when you're looking to go out and buy something Firstly, what's the immediate need? Now, this one's kind of obvious who the general target customer is. Um, it's gonna be a woman, obviously. And, you know, look at cues like colors. So here, purple, lavender, the fragrance. I mean, I love the smell of lavender, but this one's t clearly targeted towards um, the more feminine kind of market. And you can see as well in the keywords, it says gift set uh, for women, gift set for women. So these guys know who they're targeting it to. By the way, as an aside, you could probably create something quite similar, but target to men. Maybe you would have different colors, it would be more like earthy colors or strong colors. And you'd probably change the scent probably to something more masculine. I don't know what, like sandalwood or something like that. So you could have a very similar product, but targeted at a different target customer. So why are they buying the product? And here it's actually, you could go two ways. So it depends how many people you think are buying this as gifts. Um, because the target customer is either the gift recipient or the gift buyer. Now, I'm just gonna keep things simple right now. Again, for this example, I'm gonna say that it's women buying it for women. So there's no difference between the two, but there may be um, in other cases like, you know, let's say it's an anniversary gift or something like that. Then obviously it's either a man buying it for a woman, husband for wife, or it could be a wife buying it for the husband. So you gotta think about both of those. But in this case, let's just say it's women buying it for other women. Um, so why are they buying the product? If they're the ones giving the gift, they want to, uh, you know, form a closer relationship. They want to feel, um, they want to give the gift of appreciation and show that person that they're special to them. If they're the ones receiving the product, they want to relax. It's really quite simple. 
And then you can look and follow those two pathways to the next level. What's the real need, the change, the fundamental or emotional desire that they want fulfilled? So again, I've kind of complicated it with these two pathways. So I'm just gonna bring it back and let's talk about the person who's receiving the product. So fundamentally, the person who's gonna get a real benefit out of this gift when they receive it, they wanna relax, but what does that really mean? It means they want to de-stress. They wanna forget about the troubles in their life. They, they're too busy with kids or they're too busy with work or they're too busy with just the day-to-day -day crap. And they just want some time in their day when they can go and have a spa and forget about all that crap and feel like breathe in these nice scents and have a release. And a release of tension, I think, is the fundamental feeling that they want. That state change of being stressed to feeling free and, and fresh and, you know, relaxed. So once you understand the emotional sort of state change, what's the improvement they want in their life, step three, make a product that does that better, basically. I am not going to talk about that just yet because that's part of the process where you're going to look at the listing, you're going to go and look at the niche, you're going to use your own idea sort of generation and to, to find ways to make this product better. So we'll cover that in this lesson, in this video. Um, and then step four, that's how you're marketing the product. That's how you're making this listing, your listing of your product look better than this existing one. How do you show that your product better fulfills that fundamental desire, that fundamental emotional need or that change they want in their life? How do you show that with your product? And so that's gonna be the product itself, the packaging, but mainly, mainly on Amazon, it's gonna be the listing itself. So it's the main image, it's having the keywords right, it's all of that sort of stuff. It might be having brand videos in here. All of that stuff is step four. So I'll show you examples in this video, but really that's you know like a whole separate topic. So you know these four steps. If you don't understand these, you can look at the best possible niche ever and you won't understand how to make money out of it. If you understand these four steps, you can look at the worst niche ever, you can look at the most average, boring, generic looking products, and you can take that and you can turn it into an art and you can turn it into something that's gonna make you money as well. And that's what I want you to do. So we sort of covered this from a basic level um, with this product, at least number one, number two, you understand that now. Um, you could maybe even pause this video and take some time to try and map that out. This is a key part of when you're developing new products is really like writing down, we call it a, a customer avatar of like, write a story for this character who's buying the product. What's their, you know, what's their day look like? What do their hopes, dreams, and fears look like? Once you really put yourself into those shoes, and that's both of these step one and step two, you'll be much better equipped to do step three, which is to make a product that better fulfills that need. I can't go into all of that right now. Um, feel free to Google customer avatars. It's a sort of marketing, you know, marketing exercise that's done really commonly. I'll leave that with you, but I'm just gonna look through this from an Amazon perspective and see how I could very quickly make a product that better fulfills that need. So I'm gonna look at this listing first, like I said, and then I'm gonna look at the niche and I'm gonna try and just gather in, soak up all of these ideas. Um, and I'll go back to these notes. I'm gonna show you the main ways that I use to identify the right improvements to make a product that better fulfills that need so that I can dominate these niches. The first way that I do it um, is the most basic way and that is by reading the reviews. I will always do that without fail. You will always get useful nuggets of information and sometimes you'll get just absolute gold mines of information just by reading customer reviews that are available. Again, you can do this in your pajamas at home in bed. Like it's so easy these days, it's crazy. Um, another great way of finding improvements is to just look at the frequently bought together or the products that Amazon is linking in together with this one. So what do I mean by that? Go down, this is the Helium 10 extension. Don't worry about that. So here I'm looking at frequently bought together uh, I'm also looking at sponsored. So sponsored just means that either Amazon thinks it is relevant or a competitor has actually specifically targeted their product uh, on this one. So it could be either of the two. This one's more important because this actually shows, you know, like factually how many people or what's the most common products that people are buying with this first one. And also this one as well, customers also bought. This one's good sometimes as well. So I'll look through that, see what else I can see. There's more sponsored products results here um, and then look through the reviews. Now, in this case, I'm not actually going to look through these reviews. I'm, I'll, I'll give you a quick look actually, but because this rating is so high, I'm really gonna see what they've done well more so than what they've done badly. So I'll quickly take a look at, let's say the two and the three star reviews in this case. Pretty cheap looking, good for the price. Yeah, three stars, good for the price. 
That's a classic Amazon customer. Three stars, too small. I thought it was much smaller than the picture and it could have used a few more items. So you gotta be careful with just taking one review like this. Now, because this product has 4.7 stars, if these reviews are genuine, which I would check as well, then I'm not necessarily just gonna go out and make this bigger because one person said that it is. But if I see it enough times, um, then I might start to investigate that as a potential improvement. So uh, actually, let me go back as well. I don't know if you can do it from here. You can't. So back in the main listing page, this is a really useful tool that works Sometimes it doesn't always work, um, but it is very useful when it does, which is review downloader. So you can click review downloader, leave this blank, go extract, and you'll actually get a summary of all of those reviews. So what was it? Too small, small, five, smaller than expected, smaller than expected, too small, small areas, so they're not. So only two customers out of like 80, or realistically out of a lot of customers have thought that it's too small. So I would probably like scrap that. Um, but this in general is really useful because anytime you're thinking of something, you wanna see whether it was good or bad, just type in the keyword. Um, you can even see the analysis of the most common words occurring in the reviews, huge goldmine of information. So this is for my, that doesn't tell you anything. Um, the Christmas gift, gift, she loves it. Obviously, if you didn't know who the target customer was, wife, there you go, gift basket. Yeah, you know, it's a gift bought this for my, bought this for my wife. <laughs> um, you would look at these reviews and you're looking to, to fill in these other words. So who got this for my wife, uh, you know, daughter, uh, mother, grandmother, bought this for my same thing. Because remember, we're trying to find, da, 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 da. we're trying to understand the target customer and why they are buying the product. So these reviews will give you a gold mine of information about number one. It will also tell you a lot about number two, but number two is better mapped out sort of visualizing it, taking that next step further yourself or even talking to these cut target customers if you can. That's my next way of identifying the right improvements. It is once you have really understood who your target customer is, go and find them. Um, if it is something, uh, a, a large demographic like women, then you can go and talk to women uh, and then you can get these product ideas and you can start to bounce them off women and see, you know, if you actually like give one of these gifts to your wife, like go and buy this one and give it to your wife or or whoever it may be, and see what they like about it and see how they actually use it at home. Um, and then you can pick up information about that and you can use that to generate a better product. Now, again, I'm gonna show you specific ideas in a sec, but these are just ways that I'm approaching this and ways that you should be approaching this to very quickly generate lots of just really good ideas. And the second way is the opposite. So flip that around. So instead of asking your target customer what they would like, just make a potential product or generate the actual idea first and then test it on them, see how they like it. So th these are the ways that I'm looking at these. Now, I wanna show you more about um, particularly frequently bought together for this one. So we're back in the listing now. Um, so I wanna look at the frequently bought together. And this, at first glance, it doesn't, doesn't really mean that much to me. Promises from God, the blessings, and a very similar gift set, which I think is sold by the same, the same seller. Yeah, it is. So this is, you know, that these two products, the first and the last one, they're from the same seller. So that doesn't necessarily tell me that I should be, you know, bundling these together or something like that. But I could in, in certain other cases. Um, the next thing that I wanna look at is actually go to the niche and see what are the other people doing in this niche. Now, you can do this firstly by just getting the, the main keyword, which is bar, spa, gift set, I suppose, or maybe spa, gift set. Um, and if you're not sure, I, I tried this first, but if you're not sure, go to black box and then go to uh, magnet is the one you want, sorry, keyword research. And type in bath spa gift set or whatever it is that you think. Uh, I'm gonna do a new search. Let that run and let that load. And what this will give you is a, a better idea of maybe there's some other similar keywords that have a much higher search volume. And you can go and look at each of these sort of main ones and see what the type of products are. Um, so I would just search this by search volume go to the highest, because I saw here, bar spa gift set actually has a very low search volume. Although I take these numbers with a grain of salt. Um, so it's not it's not like a terrible thing if potentially that's a very low number, um, because they're not always accurate. But in this case, you know, gifts women too generic. We can't, it's very hard to, to launch a product for gifts for women because there's just so many different products that could be gifts for women. Bath bombs is um, something different. 
eye mask, shea butter, bubble bath, cosmetic bag, body scrub. So what I could be doing right now is once I'm thinking, all right, so I know who the target customer is. I know it's a, it's a certain type of woman and I know their real need that they want. All they want, they want to get from point A or state A to state B. They want to get from being stressed to de-stressing and feeling that tension and leaving their bodies and being able to forget about the problems in their day-to-day life. So that's the real problem that I'm trying to solve. Well, that's the real improvement that I want to add to this. So, uh, that and that's assuming again that I'm trying to improve it for the gift recipient. What I could do if I wanted to improve this for the gift giver is in- increase the presentation, the packaging of the design. Um, but I, I mean, I think if you look at this, nothing really jumps out to me as a way to increase that particular value. So if these were all crappily packaged and they just look like, you know, just really terrible, then I would definitely see that the person who's going to buy this, who's going to give it as a gift to someone else, they're going to get more value if it's presented better, because then they're going to look better in the eyes of the, again, the woman who's actually going to use the product, if that makes sense. Um, but in this particular case, looking through this, I don't know, I, 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 nothing jumps out to me right now as a great way to just improve that packaging and that presentation so that the gift sender or gift giver gets more value out of buying my product. And I see that, you know, there's actually a lot of these same ones, obviously just buying it probably from the same manufacturer, um, you know, the exact, exactly the same design. So I could be thinking about that in the back of my mind as a way to, again, make a better product that f- better fulfills that need for the person giving the gift. Um, and that looks quite nice, actually. I don't know why I like that. I don't know why I like that more. I think it's just the, what, what is that? I don't know. Let's move on from that one. Yeah, different. there are different designs, but I would want to have a certain, certain measure of confidence that my design would actually be better because all of these are clearly giftable. You know, they've already thought about that already. So I think I'll leave that train of thought and I'd probably go back to the original train of thought, which was the target customer. I'm going to say is the recipient now, the woman who's going to use the, the product in the bath. And how can I make a product that better fulfills that need? And in that case, I want to dig down into the bundling aspect because I, what I did see here is that they all just seem to have the same sort of stuff. They have a bunch of liquids um, all around like one particular um, you know, fragrance or whatever. So it's lavender. They've all got just lavender stuff. This one is peony scent. Most of them seem to be lavender. Um, honey. You know, so it's like a bunch of liquids or gels or creams all orientated around one particular scent. So that's great. But what else could I add that is actually going to give that woman a better experience? What's going to help her de-stress better? And the way that I want to look at that right now is I'm going to take this product and I want to go to black box. I think it is. There's so many tools. Yeah, product targeting. And what I showed you before was, again, this way of identifying other things to improve your product, whether you're bundling it together or you're increasing something into it, adding more value to it, is by seeing what other people are buying it together. So they're assuming they're buying it for the same sort of purpose. Um, And this one was something that interested me when I saw it. Now, this seems like something completely random, but actually, if you just see those two products and you don't understand these other layers of what's going on, that doesn't make any sense. But if you understand what's the fundamental emotional desire that that person wants, um, both from the gift giver and the gift recipient, suddenly it starts to make a lot of sense. Promises from God for women cards, the box of blessings. A box of blessings made for sharing with all of the women you appreciate having in your life. Um, These are inspirational messages in a box. Give it all at once. Your small gift will be received with smiles and gratitude for your thoughtfulness. So again, you've got these two different pathways. The customer is either the person buying the gift because they want to feel loved as well. They want to feel appreciated by giving the gift. They want to feel appreciated. They want to help that person, you know, just experience and again, like feel happier themselves. Um, And the person receiving it pretty much wants the same thing, really. So here are some ideas that I started to think about. I wanted to think about what can I actually add into this product that isn't just another lavender cream, that isn't just, you know, stuff that you put on your body, body butter, whatever else. These could be nice, but they don't look like great differentiators. Um, So what are some other things that, again, just coming back to this, this basic fundamental desire, which is to relax. So how could I 
add in some new products into this, or maybe take some out, add in some different ones that appear more diverse and are able to more holistically help somebody to relax at the end of a work day or on a weekend or on a Friday night. How could I do that? And the frequently bought together is a really good way of doing this a lot of times because again, it's meeting the same need. So the way that I wanted to show you was product targeting and I'm gonna grab the ASIN. Uh, and this, rather than going to each of these listings and looking down and scrolling down to frequently bought together and blah, 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 this is a way of doing it more automatically, which I like a lot. So I'm gonna type in the ASIN here um, and what else? I don't need to select any categories, filters, so this is just gonna give a big list of anything that connects to this particular ASIN. And I could select the, I don't know why it keeps, did I, there we go. Um, anything that's connected to this listing or any other ones that I enter in terms of the frequently bought together, suggested or customers also bought. So in this case, I wanna try, uh, I'm gonna try all of these, but I'll try this one first and I'm not gonna filter anything. I just wanna see what comes up because this is gonna give me all of those related products. And then I'm gonna try and pick out ideas, no data. So I don't know, did I type in that ASIN correctly? So I can't get this to work like it was before. I'm getting some different results, but type this into the product targeting, that ASIN that you wanna look at, and you'll see all of the related products that are tied together by Amazon. Now, in this case, again, I was looking for scented candles was one that popped up before that I found very interesting. In this case, I can't seem to see it. Um, so I can't remember this specific example, but I've got this one again the the promises from God, blessings, cards, and potentially bath bombs if I'm looking at adding some sort of something different to this bundle. The key thing that's got me going here is that these are all very similar products. And we, if we look at this main keyword, um, isolating stuff that's you know clearly just different, like bath towels, they're all just, it's a scent and then a bunch of creams, liquids, whatever else, and then in some sort of like basket. And... I think you want to add something in that's just a little bit different, you know, something different. And there is space to stand out here. Like these guys, they're doing it. They've got bath bombs and candles as well. Um, but most of these, these normal bath bar gift sets, they're just doing the same thing. So my train of thought here, and I don't want this to run on too long, but again, this is just ideas that you can generate on the fly and then just go and validate and, and create. My idea with this is to Get this gift set. Now I'm thinking again, where are we? I know the target customer, both of them. So it's firstly, you can think of this, you wanna meet the target, the, the gift recipient's needs, and you also wanna meet the gift giver's needs. So you wanna understand them, what are the fundamental emotional desires that they both have, and then make a product that better fulfills that need. So the first thing that I thought of that would actually fill both of these is to just make a more experiential product. Now, what I mean is, so this is a physical bunch of creams that you give to somebody and it looks kind of nice. It's got a nice ribbon around it. So that's cool. You know, that would be well received. But clearly there's this desire um, for the gift giver to buy these two together. But they want to give something, which is a, the physical product, and then they want to give a, a message behind it. And to help, like, the message will help accentuate that experience of, like, receiving the gift, using it to de-stress, and then when they read these messages and you scroll down here and um, these are very religious, obviously, but you could take away the religious aspect if you wanted to target a broader market. You're truly a wonderful person. Think about how nice that is or you will bless, be blessed with peace. Think about how nice that is to be lying in your bath, you know, doing whatever it is that you do with these creams and to have those nice like inspirational messages running through your head. So my idea, just thinking about this off the top of my head, is that I would like to create some sort of, I don't want to say guidebook or like a, not a use, like a, like a how-to that goes together with this bundle of products that actually firstly has uplifting or relaxing or inspirational, you know, quotes or messages that were really like, they're firstly going to seem, they're going to make that the, the relationship between the gift giver and the gift recipient seem stronger. And then more importantly, they're gonna build something around this experience of going and using this in, in the spa. So what I'm thinking is like a, you know, like a, a guide to like, okay, on Tuesday night after work for one hour, this is how you're gonna use these products. You're gonna get these particular ones in this combination and you're gonna spend, you know, this 45 minute ritual before the bath um, 
preparing yourself with whatever else it may be. And I think this starts to work better and better as you can add in some other products as well. So the, again, the bundle that I found on this um, product targeting before, but I can't find it now, was a particular type of scented candle. Now I haven't been able to find it again um, and I don't have time to go and browse for it, but let's say scented candles, because if we look at here, um, this particular niche, no one's really doing it. They're all just selling the same thing, maybe different, different colors, different scent, but it's the same thing. So why not add in something a bit different that's gonna help again, go back to that experience. What's the experience or the desire that they wanna fulfill? How can I do that better? I think candles would be a really nice touch. And I think candles plus this, <laughs> I really can't think of the words, but I would, it, this would take a while to, to really d deliver well. And I would have to go and really like get this tested out with people is a guy that when you receive it, it's like, okay, here's your gift set. Here's how you're gonna use it. Here are the particular different experiences that you can actually use with this gift set. And you know, here's the how-to guide of step one, step two, step three. You know, pair the candles with this, uh, with the bath gels, with a glass of white wine or something, and spend two hours. And you know, here's the message of the day for that particular experience. And you could have a guidebook with you know ten different experiences, or one for each day of the week, or um, what could you have one per week for a month or six months or something like that, so that you know it's more interactive. And I think there's a lot more around that experience. And I'm just riffing off the top of my head right now, but this is coming from this data source which is showing me that there's clearly a desire to buy this product with something that is more experiential than just this physical product. So that's where, really where I'm going with that. Um, and I think if I add in another bundle as well, candles, something else, I'm sure I could think of something even better because the idea is you always wanna go for the highest price point possible. And if you can, it wouldn't, it, it's not gonna work if you just add in more liquids because no one can tell the difference between this one, which has three, four, and let's say, you know, that one, which has five or six. It's, it's more of the same. But if you add in something that's different and something that's a unique touch that doesn't exist, then you can clearly differentiate and people can see that because step four is to show that your product fulfills the need better than anything else on the market. So again, riffing off the top of my head, I am pretty confident that would be able to deliver a better experience to deliver that the change and the fundamental desire that they have um, and I believe that showing it with a you know visually different product like candles or something else would be able to allow me to show it better on this listing page, which is all just the same stuff over and over again. And you can see where I got all this data from. So how do I identify the right improvements? Uh, I did go through and read the reviews, but I would obviously go back and look at different competitors and read more and more of those reviews. I wanna go back through to the um, you know, the review downloader, and I wanna look at all of those most common words as well. I'll be picking up so much useful data when I do that. Um, so I would do that thoroughly. I've gone through the frequently bought together again. I would add in as well, just go and add more data to, to the ideas that you're already generating. So I'd add in other ASINs, do the product targeting again. And remember that the key part is understanding your target customer on firstly, that more superficial level, but then secondly, the deeper emotional desire level. Um, and understand that you may have multiple customers that you're appealing your product to. So in this case, again, it's the gift giver and the gift recipient. So both of them, because the gift giver is the one who actually buys the product, but they need to get value out of the gift recipient getting value out of the product as well. So this one's a little bit more complicated like that. Um, then I go do more legwork. There's a lot of legwork with these guys. You, you can generate these ideas very easily, um, but then you actually have to go and implement and execute and really like get it right. And that's the next step. And that's the step that if you don't understand that you need to even do this, you just you don't realize that there is that legwork to do. So that would be the next step is going and you know buy the product, give it to your wife, give it to your girlfriend, see how they use it, see how you can make that better. What if you bought the product and then that idea that I wanted to test out with the you know the little guided cards and things like that, I would handwrite them and I would go and give it to my girlfriend. I would go give it to my wife and I would see what it's like for her to do that and go through that with my handwritten cards. And then I would get feedback directly from her. Get your friends to go do it with their girlfriends, with their with their wives. And you would, by doing this, you know, five, 10 times with enough of your friends doing it, you would find out the exact best working combination to create this product that I can guarantee you, if you step out with something that has a better experience, and I didn't even talk about, by the way, improving the packaging. So once you start adding these extra things in and creating more premium product and starting to target that highest price point in the niche, that's when you can suddenly justify spending more money on better packaging and better presentation. And then it's like this feedback loop where your product starts to stand out more and more, which means more people are gonna buy it. 
And if the product itself stands on its own legs and its quality is better than the rest, people are gonna leave fantastic reviews. You're gonna get more reviews showing this better product and it's, that's how you start the Amazon flywheel. So I didn't mention that, um, but that's another thing that I would do as well. So this is a summary of the different ways that you can improve your product offering. So I talked about increasing the, or adding that experiential aspect with those blessing cards or the guided cards. Um, so that's adding an experience. I would call that improving the function. You could also, again, talk about improved packaging, presenting it better so that the gift giver is gonna know that that gift is gonna be received better. And so they're gonna get more value out of it. Um, and of course, bundling. So I was looking for bundling ideas using the frequently bought together. This was just one particular example that I dropped into and did about 30 minutes of analysis. I could do this all day, every day, and I will. If you want more videos like this, leave me a comment, letting me know that you do, that you get value out of this, and I will create more for you. If you like the video, make sure to smash the like button, please. All right, and that's where we'll leave it for this video. Now, I've covered a lot of ground here, but obviously there is still a lot more to learn. So what I recommend for you for your next step, if you're not absolutely sure about everything about how to proceed next, go here and check out my comprehensive product research tutorial. I can pretty much guarantee you won't find anything more detailed and more valuable on YouTube. So go there and check that out. Um, I'm really gonna dive into more detail about finding a product in that video. Make sure to subscribe, click the notification bell if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you over there in the tutorial. Now, let's go.